Well, Mike, some of our readers may not know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I was born in England. My mother's English, my father's Scottish. I joke that they got married, so I'm Scottish. Uh, I came to Canada, I moved to the US, joined the Air Force, went to the Army Guard after that, back to the Air Guard, back to the Army Guard, back to the Air Guard. Uh, Lucky for punishment. I've uh, been writing pretty much since I was seven. First got published when I was 30 and started making a living at it at 34. Okay. Just quick and dirty summary. Growing up, how much military fiction or military science fiction did you read? Uh, I started with Highlands Juveniles, a lot of which had a semi military feel to them. Uh, I think I was actually 18 before I started reading actual military SF. I uh, graduated basic, I was in tech school. Starship Troopers and had a huge impact on me and quite a bit of Deaning stuff and Jerry Purnell stuff was available at the exchange. A lot of, a lot of it was stuff that made was marketing that way. mentioned your service, would you care to elaborate a little more on that? Uh, not a lot really. Uh, Cold War, I was in an engineer unit and unfortunately I was stuck at a training base. Uh, middle of Illinois, in the middle of Illinois. No flight mission, no missile mission, nothing but reapers. Uh, I had a reasonably good time. I used to do a lot more field exercises. I was on the aggressor team, that was always fun. Uh, simulating blowing things up, uh, attacks, and uh, there was an amazing number of people who insisted that we were never going to do stuff like that, it was stupid to practice all this, and shortly after I left active duty, the Gulf War started, and a bunch of them got mobilized, I uh, wonder if they, how they were feeling about that. Uh, Army Guard, I went down to the Mississippi Flood for several weeks. That was, in, in some ways, that was almost a, a war zone stateside, both because of the damage and because there were actually flotillas of boats crossing the river to try and knock levees down on the other side to relieve pressure on their side of the river. That didn't actually make the news very much. People were going over in skiffs. Uh, back in the Air Guard, I went over to Kuwait for Operation Desert Fox. Helped to build out that very base. Now, has your service uh, shown up in your fiction? Or Absolutely. Uh, lots of the politics, the, the hacking between units, the arguing between units, precedence, uh, where the money goes, who's going to be in charge, uh, some of the silly stuff, of course, a lot of the drinking and, and fun stuff. There's all kinds of uh, science fiction conventions I run into, hundreds of people who claim they were former Navy SEALs or Special Forces or this or that, almost all of whom are lying. And I tell aspiring writers the way to spot the real ones is they're talking about their drinking stories. If they're telling you how much of a hero they are, they're probably not. If they're talking about how much beer they drank in Germany and how stupid they were and how the Pulitzer roused them up, they're probably telling the truth. 
<laughs> Do you feel that service is a prerequisite to writing good fiction? Good fiction, no. Uh, not even necessarily good military fiction. David Weber manages to write some great stuff. Uh, the criticism I have of both uh, him and, to a greater degree, Tom Clancy is the stuff's a little sterile in some regards. Uh, stuff generally goes the way it should within certain probabilities, whereas the real world stuff just breaks down randomly, uh, sometimes just to tick you off. Stuff just stops. Uh, stuff like that, and a lot of the social stuff is hard to pick up if you have been in the military. But I, I think both of them did well, and I think whoever did better. Um, I, Timothy Zahn's never been in the military, but he's done some actually some very impressive stuff. And I believe he told me it was based on the politics of the university, which I believe. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about your military fiction and how you got started. Uh, I'm not sure how I got started. Just to, so this stuff just jumped out at me that I needed to write it. And a couple of those actually haven't been written or published yet. They're still, they're still notes. Um, the Weapon, it's set in a war between a futuristic society and a fascistic Earth where the UN has gained world control and is gradually uh, assimilating colonies. And something that came to me with that was I met briefly uh, one of the uh, uh, Colonel Tibbets who dropped one of the A-bombs. And you know, I wasn't going to ask him how does it feel to have done that, but I started thinking about how would somebody feel if they did that much damage and it came up with a character and came up with a mission destroys a large chunk of Earth's infrastructure and a lot of people, and basically goes insane because he's a decent guy, he, he's a moral man, and this is something that, while it needed to be done, he's not comfortable with the fact that he was the one who did it. Um, Freehold, my first published novel, uh, there's a small bit of uh, coming of age story in it, but there's uh, a lot more of the Immigrant, which of course is based partly on me. Uh, I vividly remember when we moved from England to Canada. The first day in Canada, we went to an AP grocery, and here was 100 yards of fresh produce. And you could just help yourself. I uh, used to England where you'd have to argue with the grocer who wants to get rid of the rotten stuff. And we have that stuff first. Um, had to haggle over everything. And in North America, you just walk into a store, and if you don't want it, you don't take it, and they'll just throw it out. Probably the only place in the world where that's possible when the production exists. So I created a culture that was going to be drastically different from the background and introduced the character into it. And, uh, the conflict was already, I'm not sure why I decided to have the conflict there, but it was already part of the 